Hey, what's up everybody? I am Mike Escamilla and today's bike check is my United Caveman. When we first started designing this bike, we I wanted to do something kind of special and sort of just for me, but it, it was a throwback to a time in bike riding that was probably most important to me. It was the early 90s. I had just started getting into bike riding for real and I just was psyched. You know, I was psyched on bike riding. I rode every day, every minute, to school, to the jumps, before school, after school, street riding, and so when I thought about making a frame, I wanted to do uh, a sort of throwback to that time. So I did the first bike that I bought on my own, which I think was in the eighth grade. And it was the 91 Hall Sport. We made an updated version. Even the first runs of the bike were a closer color to the color I had, as you can see. But when we did a second run, we made it yellow. And the graphics are a throwback to the early 90s Wilkeson Airlines wall frame, which I love. Dr. Ron, he was psyched and I'm stoked on it. I actually like these graphics better than the first graphics. For a lot of people, well obviously most people who weren't riding or even alive back then, you see this bass card and they just really wonder what it is or they see this down tube and be like, oh, it's weak and all these silly things that they've come to believe. But at the time, for a very few years, bikes have bass cards. And it was a time when bike riding was pretty gangster actually. After you know the late 80s and the mid 90s, there was no big corporate sponsors. And even even if you go through magazines, it goes from jerseys, jerseys, jerseys to all of a sudden just like people just look punk rock, leather jackets, dreads. Everyone's got their own style, and everyone's style changed, and it was very unique. And then in about 95, when the X Games back, you started seeing more jerseys and, and more corporate uh, gigs and cleaner haircuts and things like that. So for me, I think it's really one of the greatest, if not the greatest time in bike riding because so I felt like bike riders took bike riding back and turned it into what it is today. When we were designing this frame, we were trying to think of kind of an old, a little bit older guy. And I always run 20.5, but settled on 20.8. I think the, uh, I'm gonna have to look at the specs because I, I'm the kind of guy who just like, as long as it's sort of the right length, I just ride it. I've never been a guy that worried about how long his chain was or how long the back wheel was or the standing height. As long as the bar is in the right place and the frame is roughly the right frame length, I can use just a couple hours. So we got the, um, the top tube comes in at 20.8. The head tube angle is 75. Seat tube angle is 69. The chain stay length, slammed all the way, is 13.65. Bottom rocket height is 11.8, it looks like. And um, the standover height is 8.8. .8. I don't even know what all that means. Apparently you can manual farther or it's more stable or something, but to me, bike is a bike. I mean, historically, I've kind of had the same bike since 1995. Uh, and we've gone, you know, there's been tons of trends. Shorter bikes, taller bikes, huge bars, different stuff. And I never really went along with the trends. No brakes, no pegs, two pegs. I just didn't really, for me, it didn't make sense. Why would I get rid of my front brakes when I really enjoy doing front brake stuff? And, and for me personally, I'm not really into the foot jam stuff. I don't, when I see it, I don't think it looks as good. Uh, tricks with front brake are a hundred times harder than foot jam stuff. And that's why as soon as foot jams came out, you started seeing bar spins and nose picks more, and tail ups and nose picks more. There's cash roll to nose pick. Because I do run brakes, forks are a lot harder to come by. So these are actually some old volume forks with the 990 mounts. And I'm running the United Bicycle Union brakes. Brakes are, you seem like they're pretty standard all around, but sometimes you get like a lower, lower profile and I want to support my boys at Bicycle Union. What up, John? Cranks. Now, I'm running the GT Power Series cranks. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, I'm not sure when they discontinued them exactly, probably was early 90s, they made these aluminum cranks that were expensive and they were the dopest cranks ever. Like everyone had them. They came in all the best GTs and I could never afford them. And by the time that my parents would, would buy me something like that, knowing that I'm into the sport enough to, to, to buy it, they would already discontinue them and they'd moved on with chromoly cranks, which I ended up getting, I think. So now that they had a chance to, um, these came back, I finally get to ride some cranks, which is great. For pedals, I'm running Demolition Trooper pedal, which is uh, you know just a plastic pedal. I was sponsored by Demolition for a long time, so some of these things are just, I'm used to it. And I'm running the 25, I believe, eight in the back? I'm not sure. But with the bash guard that we put in, 
you have to run a 25. It's the only way we cover it. Originally, we were going to have a big plastic guard, but the molding on it was so expensive for how many bikes we were going to make, it didn't make sense. So we have a metal guard. Because I ride so many pools, and I was on the last day, I was working on something that I didn't get. I didn't want to chip pool coping or make big chunks in it. So I actually took an old demolition momentum tire, cut it, and bolted it to the bash guard. It's actually great. It's made it a lot easier to, to do bash slides and stuff because the metal is so fast. It's deadly fast. One of the coolest things we did when we made the bash guard was we actually made it acoustically correct. I know it sounds silly, but with all this tubing that came down, and since I like to run my chain so tight, it actually uh, works sort of like, like this. Check it out, ready? I'm running a uh, fit seat post that must have been the only one available, and a United seat, and the pegs. The pegs are demolition pegs. They were, they're actually my old signature peg. Uh, I had a signature peg on demolition years ago called the Numchuck, and it was, al it was aluminum with a steel over it, as you see, and a lot of companies make now. I wanted to do a plastic peg, so we came up with a plastic peg a version of it. it. was called the Dumchuck, which was for me, it was the diet Numchuck. So that's where that came from. For my wheel set, I actually, again, got what what I could get. At the time, because of all the pandemic and everything, I got the United front, they only have front wheels in, so I got a United front rim, and for the back wheel, I have a demolition back wheel with the Biz Rotator V4 Pro Free Coaster. I've actually never ran these little plastic hub guards. I always thought they were kind of silly. In all the 20 some years I've been riding grinding, I've never, I've broken like three spokes my entire time, I just grinded on the peg. I'm running the Odyssey Gyro Mid Levers. They're like kind of a medium length, and I, they got the sort of barrel adjusters where like the barrel goes into one big barrel. I sort of, I've almost always ran Odyssey levers. They've always hooked me up, and they've got, uh, I would say the best, the best levers, if not the only levers. I've also got, I believe this is a, I believe that's an Odyssey uh, gyro as well. The stem actually, uh, on the last trip I had with Jason N's, whatever stem I had on before, stripped out, and so when we got back to his, I couldn't ride for a day. When we got back to his house, he found an old stem he had in the box. So this is an old demolition stem from like 20 years ago, and I just never, it's on there now, so it'll probably be on there for the length of the bike. Bars are on United Bars. I wish I knew which bars they were. I tried to look it up, but I couldn't figure it out. All I know is they're the smallest bars that they made. I found some old demolition grips. I realized how picky I get. And so I found these old ones from like 15 years ago in a box, or 10 years. You can't run grips without a flange because uh, you nick your knuckles on your brake lever, and I just like that feeling. I think it's a feeling of like, this feels like BMX to me, you know? Tires, this is the first time I haven't run demolition tires in a long time, but I'm, I'm running the, the United Direct tire, and I love it. I always have a weird thing with tires. Once I find one I like, I try to stick with it, but I think that's about it. I mean, for me nowadays, I'm almost sold. I barely ever ride cement parks, and I barely ever ride wood. I'm mostly riding backyard pools. That's a due to like a lot of things. Um, I really enjoy it. I feel like I'm at a point where I, you know, I'm, I work as a stuntman and I don't want to get hurt riding my bike too much, you know? So so I think pools kind of, they're different every time. And to be honest with you, it's more of the, the hunt and the adventure, finding them, you know, almost always you ride a pool, you don't get to ride it that much. So you kind of got to get everything you're going to get. I can do four to eight tricks in a pool and challenge myself because everyone's different, it's fun. And it's more, it's, to be honest with you, it's more the crew I've been hanging out with that it's just, I just want to do stuff with them. Ooh, I even have a, I believe it's a flat tire there, and a slow leak, and yeah, I'll be honest, at my age, a good flat will end a career, I'm telling you. I originally made a bash guard bike in 2000, on my Hoffman bash guard bike, and that was for two tricks. I wanted to do 270 to bash slide down a rail, and a half cab 90 bash slide off. And I killed myself forever trying to get it, never got one good enough to show. I really think if one of these young kids got a bash guard bike, uh, it's just another place for you to grind and slide. You can invent an entire new world of tricks that no one else is doing. But to me, that's the most exciting thing when it comes to seeing someone ride bikes. I, I've always had this sort of um, two-tier system on how I, I think of bike riders. I think of the people who are doing stuff really good and uh, really, you know, doing these big things and do, doing everything perfect. And then I have a bigger place in my heart for the guys who invent it. And even if it's small, they bring it out there and they push it and changing the way people view their surroundings and bike riding, that they're really, they're really getting psyched. But yeah, that's it. That's the United Caveman. 
Thanks a lot. See ya.